out here. Hey, you. Hey, you. Come on. Sit down. You're sitting at the grown-ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella. And as always, my partner in crime. John Jacobs. Thank you so much. And first off, let's begin with saying a happy New Year's to everybody. Yes. 2021 is over. Now we got 2022. Will it be the <laughs> same thing? Will it be a reboot, a remake of whatever 21, 2021 oh, was? Who knows? Je- Jesse's freezing. I'm freezing? Yeah, you were. Oh, sorry about that, everybody. Anyways, I was saying Happy New Year's to all of you. And I'm going to tell you this. This year is going to we we are in for so much incredible content. I'm talking comic book movies. I mean, this is the year of three Batmans. Uh, we got Sam Raimi's uh, Multiverse of Madness coming out. It's going to be insane if you're a Marvel or DC fan or anything else. But we're not here to talk about 2022 and what it has to bring. We're here to talk about what 2021 has brought us. Now, before we start the show, I want to say make sure you like and subscribe, all right? And like our Facebook page, share this video link right now, and we do live comments. So if you want to comment on anything we're talking about tonight, just that comment thing right there, right below, type it, and we'll talk about it. Because we got a few things we're going to talk about uh, regarding uh, 2021. Because like I said, there is the best and the worst things uh, yes, yes. All year you've heard me and uh, me and John, we discussed movies. We talked about how much we loved them, hate them, you know. But now we're going to do a review because some of these we got to rewatch and we might have different opinions on now. Mm-hmm. But John, John, my man there, I know he <laughs> dug his heels in. He uh, it's not about digging your heels in, man. It's just about facing reality, but we'll get there. I'm sure you put that movie on the list. I have no doubt. Uh, real quick, so what Jesse and I talked about earlier was we put a list together, and I said, okay, Jesse, here you go. Pick five. Don't tell me what they are, and then just surprise me through the show. So Jesse knows exactly what we're talking about on the show today. I, however, have no idea. So this is going to be fun. All right. I know so, you put it on the list, though. I know you did. I know. I know. We're going to talk about it. Don't worry. We're going we're to talk about it. But let's start off with something that came oh, at the beginning of the year. Mortal Kombat! And then I was like... Uh, James Wan delivered us something a little early before Christmas got here in the middle of the year, which was this movie. He produced it and directed. But for me, this movie was a fantastic treat. Uh, comment below whether you liked Mortal Kombat, you didn't like it, and let us know why. Now, John, uh, have you watched this movie recently? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I essentially watched it twice before we did our show, and to be honest, there was no reason to watch it again. But you want to know what I did just recently watch? The Mortal Kombat from 1995, I believe, or 96. Am I getting myself confused? Either way, uh, yeah, I the good one. The good one. I'm, I'm a thousand percent sure it's 95. So, man, yeah, but anyways. Um, 95, yep. There it is, yeah. At least it wasn't, uh, a, what was the one, Apocalypse or something? I don't even. Well, that, don't even... Was, that, that was Annihilation. And look, Annihilation was a pile of shit. It really, truly was, but it was still better than the Matrix Four. Ooh, said it. <laughs> we'll talk about that soon. Now, now with Mortal Kombat, you know, it, obviously nowadays you don't just make one movie and you're done with it. Of and course. right now, it was reported that this movie had one of the biggest openings on HBO Max this year. Yeah, I believe it. And you know, Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice also had one of the biggest opening weekends. And then look at the numbers the week after. So, okay, opening, awesome, great job. So everybody watched it, opening, and then nobody watched it after that. Yeah, well, I don't feel like that. it was like that for Mortal Kombat. Did you? Did you feel no, like that? I mean, look, I'm very harsh on this film. I know I'm there, I, I know I'm not alone. There are people that are very harsh on this as well. Huge well, what Mortal were Kombat some, what fans. Were some uh, points that you felt this film lacked? <sighs> well... I don't like Liu Kang just casually showing up as a side character with his own little squad and then going off here for a minute. And then it's like, wait, what? No, 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 no. We, we have, what is it, 30 years now? Or, yeah, I think it's 30, 30 years, years now. Of, yeah, yeah. 30 There's years a lot of, of war. 
Liu Kang wins the tournament. I, I, I understand people want to do things different, and that's fine, but you need to keep lore intact. And that shit drove me nuts. Like, oh, hey, that's Liu Kang and his posse. I'm like, oh, what is it, an hour and 20 minutes into this movie and Liu Kang's finally showing up? Like, what the fuck is going on? Oh. And then we got, what, like seven minutes of, of uh, Scorpion and we got a sky beam like we do in every action movie? Yeah, it was, it was pretty entertaining for me, man. I understand. And, and real quick, I just want to throw uh, some love out to Reggie. Yeah. Hey, hey Reggie. I agree with it. I want to see more. And I think that's what this movie was. And, and I think one of the issues with this, and again, this is a Warner Brothers movie, and I I know that I have a very biased dislike towards Warner Brothers because you I, do. I because they don't they don't let their directors do what they need. Even to though do. you love Batman. Yes, because I love Batman. And there's we'll talk about that soon. But anyways, <laughs> with this movie in particular, uh it, it suffered from what I like to call uh, franchise launchers, okay? Because I'll agree with that. you because here's the reason why. Look at uh, Tom Cruise's The Mummy. That was supposed to launch Oof. an entire franchise horror, Oof. classic horror mon monster oh. universe. They casted everybody yeah. for the next five movies. Yeah, and that was it. Well, hold on though. I still, I still, I'm holding on to this little glimmer of hope that universal will say you know what we had all this shit planned it's still a good idea we learned from the mistake and we just won't do that again but look i mean uh, he was trying to make mission impossible versus frankenstein that's what he need, wanted look he wanted that we need a modern day creature of the Bakagoon. and I i'm sorry but that fucking shape of water does not count. All that was was Alex's Jones conspiracy theory come to light, and they just wanted to have fish sex on TV. No, so that's the only, only reason thing... that movie existed. No, I bring on the like... real creature of the Black Lagoon. I will... and let's get this shit going. I'll tell you the real reason that exists, actually. Uh, because uh Guillermo del Toro, when he was a kid and he was watching that movie, you know the scene in the first movie where they're the creature of Black Lagoon where they're swimming parallel to each other. Yeah, that's like he, iconic, dude. He, he as a kid always thought he always loved the Black Lagoon character so much that he thought the creature should have always had a happy ending. This was his like random, I'm gonna make it happen. You know, whether you like it or not, I always thought that story is adorable, essentially. So let's get back to Mortal Kombat yes. <laughs> because I could rant about the shape of water. So forever. this movie, like I said, was trying to launch the franchise. I agree. It was trying could, to set up a lot of things. I agree. It didn't give us the tournament. It gave us a lot of history, a lot of right. backstory. Uh, and that and, and that sometimes I think with movies, you 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 don't give too much. Like, let me give you an example. Like, and this is something I think movies did such a good job at. Uh, before the MCU, because the MCU they Ooh. took their time. Okay. Every movie that's launching a franchise now, they're trying to catch up. They're trying to catch up. They're trying to do what three movies did all in one movie, and you just simply can't do that. Now, imagine if they made this movie more focused, more focused on Liu Kang, yeah, right? and you didn't use as many characters as you did. And which, again, like I said, that would uh, I'm okay. Would, I'm okay with the characters. No, I am, I'm because concerned. Mortal Kombat is about the characters, and I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is the story that they produced out of those characters and lore. I Honestly, it looked beautiful, but it just felt like it was just hodgepodge thrown together. And I and look, I respect everybody's opinion. Just because I like or don't like something doesn't mean I'm devaluing somebody else, but... I know a ton of hardcore Mortal Kombat fans that like the movie, and I don't understand because I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan, and I hate it. Now, I'm not saying because I didn't like it. Everybody asked to know. That's not what I'm saying at all. So please, I don't want anybody to think that's what I'm saying. But it's strange to me that people who are kind of connected and really understand something as deeply as really hardcore Mortal Kombat fans do ended up liking that film. That's what's interesting to me because it's like, I didn't have that experience. I saw what they were going for. 
I appreciated it, but I felt mm. the execution was so sloppy and all over the place. I you, didn't care to watch you, it again. You have, but you as a filmmaker have a specific lens you see that movie through as a filmmaker too. Uh, I, I mean, yes. And the problem is with that movie is, look, I didn't hate the Cole character. I, I like the guy because he was the average Joe. He's the guy we're supposed to relate to. He's the fish out of water. He's the family man. He's I the like Skywalker. He's the Harry Potter. Yeah, like I liked the character, but at the same time, get rid of him because his character and us living through his character was distracting to the degree that we couldn't get other Char- deep character moments and connections because everything had to fucking be Cole, and that's what bothered me. Here's what I was bummed out with Cole. I thought for a while Cole was going to be a trick uh, uh, Johnny Cage. It, it, follow me. I thought, because Johnny Cage is an actor. He's an actor, right? Yeah. Have we ever been confirmed that's his legal name? An actor I mean, I... I I, I, get, I get where you're going. Is that a stage have, so, name so or his real name? Stuff. And look, you've stuck me. Up actor, look it up. He can't get into a decent movie anymore. He's back in the. He's back. He's fighting. It's a gritty reboot of his career. And then all of a sudden, boom! Mortal Kombat happens. It would be. I thought they were trying to do something different. Like you know, like how in the video game, he's at the height of his career with what is it, Ninja Mime? Yeah. <laughs> so real quick, his he does have a legal name. His legal name is John Carlton. Okay, so yeah. Who was also a Midway programmer, worked on NBA Jam and a bunch of badass Midway games in the mid-90s, which was the best arcade gaming in history. But anyways, let's continue. Yeah, it's common. The Mortal Kombat people name characters after him. Uh, what was it? Uh, Noob Saibot. Yeah, it's the names backwards. It, yeah. It's the creators. But anyways, let's jump over. So like I said, we got Ryan who says he liked, he liked the movie as well. Uh, I agree with this. They should have put the storyline in maybe a few movies in. I agree with definitely, that. Definitely, definitely, Reggie. And I think another big thing was I'm I'm okay. Yeah, Reggie's clothing line, everybody. Uh, he had a couple of commercials on Ryan's uh, huge, huge holiday telephone. Check it out. Check it out. United Rebels, Inc. They've got some brand new gear that they put up there, and they have a great mission statement. Make sure you pick up one of their shirts or many other offerings that they have. So, um. Another problem that I had is, like, I'm okay if you want to do a little, like, pre-tournament stuff. That's cool. But you need to do a couple of things. One, you need to let me know that you are going to get to either you're going to have the tournament or it's going to be in the second movie. And you need to tell people that up front. Like, I'm not necessarily saying, like, up front, up front. But I really want to know, is this fucking happening in this movie or is this just going to build up for another movie? I agree with that. Because it helps... uh... It helps set my expectations. If you keep teasing me the whole time and then something does or doesn't happen, I feel like my time has been wasted. Yeah. Like, and I'm not saying I have to have things spoon fed, but in, in good storytelling, you can convey all of that without spoon feeding people and keeping them interested. And for me, I just, it, it just kept, it was just like fetch questing one place to the other. And I'm just like, are we, it's what like are we if doing? I was, I was like, all right. We're going to have a Hemsworth uh, at this party. And everybody's thinking, oh, my God, it's Chris. And then Liam shows up. And they're like, fuck. Yeah, they're like, no, not that guy. We don't yeah. want him. You couldn't even get the other one? The one that married Miley Cyrus? What's going on? <laughs> you really went all the way down far past under Aldi's brand. You went, you know. Ding. But anyways, uh, real quick, uh let's uh we're going to switch gears with this uh, movie. But I'm going to give it a oh, we, before you switch gears, we have to give like a final thought type thing to this. And I mean, have oh, I'm setting it us up for it. Oh, okay. I'm, gonna give it, I'm giving it a thumbs up for 2020. I think it was a, or 2021. Mid thumb. That's fine. That's mm. fine. Everybody, I, I got to go mid because I don't hate it like I hate the Matrix, but I feel like they could have done so much better. And I don't know if I want another movie because if they redeem themselves, that'd be a great experience. But if they don't, then I'm just going to be even more mad. So, I mean, honestly, like, maybe take a break for a couple of years and then, like, let somebody else try again and see if we can get a different vision going or something. I'd actually support that. Uh, but I'd still probably support a sequel. I'd still watch it. I mean, I'm I'm going to watch it. So if they put it out there, I'll watch it. I'm just not really excited. Yeah. Well, there you have it. 
Uh, let's jump over to our next movie. And our next Uh-oh. movie uh, recently God. made some headlines because a, an uncut version of the film has now surfaced everywhere. Uh, we're going to talk about Halloween Kills. Oh, Yay! Pick, you picked the worst Halloween movie ever made. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, you heard me say it. Resurrect and you didn't better. see the producer cut of Halloween 6, my friend. You're right. I didn't. It is garbage. <laughs> oh, no, because you know why? There's an incest storyline between I, I'm Michael I'm and... Uh, yeah, no, trust You're like, me. Hey. <laughs> there, there was, there was, I didn't like that. All right? Michael should never... They ch- showed it. Uh, yeah, I know. They showed it's it. Disgusting. I don't want Michael clapping cheeks, okay? I like, I like how Sarah contributes to the show, but her voice is just ominous. That's awesome. Yes. Well, actually, she has her hand up my ass. This is all ventriloquism. Oh, I've never cool. Like that Dead show. Silence movie. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, so with this movie, this one, this was one of those movies where you and I were so on the opposite spectrum mm. when we first talked about it. Mm. So <laughs> let, let's bring the viewers back up to uh, speed. John, give us your assessment of what is one of the greatest Halloweens out there. What is one of the greatest? Probably the original one, the only one that's oh, 100% good. If, you're gonna count good. The, if you put the original in there, okay. you're going you're gonna to be doing that all day. I mean, that's fine. I also really liked the first Rob Zombie remake. Um, that, to me, and I know a lot of people hate that, and that's fine. You go ahead and hate on that. Um, but I still think it's better than Halloween Kills. Not two, not part two. But Rob Zombie's first Halloween is better than Halloween Kills. Mm-hmm. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with that. But let's jump over to the comment section. We have a question. So yes, there is a un there is an uncut version of Halloween Six, and I don't think he's circumcised. I oh, I'm sure work. Michael's circumcised. What was he born in like the 50s or the Ooh. 60s in the suburbs? Of course he was circumcised. <laughs> Everybody was getting clipped by then, man. That stuff didn't stop happening. I'm like, Michael's penis. <laughs> yeah, Michael Myers is not a he's not a scared turtle, man. He's just <laughs> much more the way. He's a majestic turtle. <laughs> sure is. Move sure. Over. What? Okay. Oh, As the person. Oh, here we go. Hi. My wife, everybody. As the person that has to listen to this without any choice whatsoever, can you not talk about Michael's? Myers penis, please. Well, your husband brought it up, not me. I, know. I did. I did. Stop it. I did. I want to read in peace. Well, you can go read in peace. I'll talk about Michael's penis anymore. Thank you. 2018 is the best. Now we will die on that hill. All right. So he will. He will. All right. But how, let's go back to kill. Let's go back to kill. All right. Reggie loved it. That's my man, Reggie. Oh, a lot of people loved it. I get that. Another teammate uh, right there. I just, you know, prefer a film that actually is coherent and doesn't waste my time and doesn't do a whole bunch of stupid shit. Ah, but, but, but the thing is, with this movie, I felt it was very different. And I know you're going to say shit. That's I know you're I know I'm setting you up for that joke. But look, I have to say this film was very different. It was about the mob mentality. Uh, it was a movie that showed what okay. Michael did to the town versus just Jamie. Uh, I was almost said Jamie Lynn Spears. What the fuck? Sorry, Jamie Lee. Why Curtis. are you thinking about the reject Spears sister? Come on. I don't man. know. Dude, I have weird moments. All right. Yeah. I have weird moments. Oh, Ted's talking crap. I'm going to give you a chance to speak up. Uh, so I can't see these in, in the, the comment field that I'm in for some reason. So, oh, yo, dude, Superman 3. Oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> Did you like where he was hoisting Richard Pryor's into the sky? Yeah, that was actually a really touching moment where the characters finally bonded. Too bad it was at the end of the film. Because All it was right. secondly like it was like Richard Pryor's movie, Superman's movie, and then they merged them in the third act. It was very strange, but I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, let's get back to Halloween kills. Yeah. So, again, so before, I want to go back to the mob mentality. In, what's your assessment of this movie more? Um, I thought the mom mentality thing was stupid. I understand the premise, but I just don't think it has any place in a Halloween film. I do not like seeing Michael Myers every 30 seconds on film. I don't like him being brightly lit. I don't like seeing him walk around and what his path of movement is. The shape is supposed to appear out of nowhere, murder you, and move on. I agree with that. They did everything but 
that in the film. Uh, the throwback characters were completely wasted. Apparently, a bunch of people in Haddonfield have guns and nobody can fucking shoot straight. Somebody brought an <laughs> iron to a gunfight. I mean, what the hell is going on, man? The only that bitch had an film, iron. Look, that bitch only, had an iron. Look, the oh, she did, and she was about ready to merv somebody, and I understand that. The best part of this movie was actually the open mic improv that fucking Tommy Doyle did in the bar because you and I have done that. And that's, that was the best part of the movie. I'm like, Holy shit. He's he didn't doing- run the light. He Dude, didn't run the light. He, he, no, he didn't even need the light. He was perfectly timed at 10 minutes. He didn't need the light. He didn't, need he didn't light. falter from his talk track. That man practiced and he hit his mark without a light perfectly. You know, every time he walks into that bar every Halloween, the bartender's like, fuck this guy again. There I was, Halloween. He reminds me of Al Bundy when he brags about the football game. <laughs> like, you know, one game. you know, Tommy Doyle wakes up every Halloween. He's like, oh, I'm going to be drinking tonight. I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be. Yeah, but you know what? Tonight. Whoever's running that open mic night or talent show, I, I don't know if it's an open mic night. It looked more like a talent show. It was a talent show, but, but regardless, it, That person doesn't have to manage him, doesn't have to light him to any degree. And I guarantee you, he could easily be, uh, if I could talk right, he could easily have been moved up to an opener, but uh, sorry. Yeah, no. (laughs) I just, oh my God, I was just cracking up because I was like, I just loved how intense he was. It's like, you got to think. Yeah. He's been doing this for 40 years. Yep. Like, you know. Going to this open mic. Stick <laughs> in his mind. This guy has spent a lifetime at this open mic telling that story. I well, know it. I know it. I know it. So let's talk about the local comedy scene real quick in Haddonfield, Illinois. Because I think <laughs> they only have one bar. So they've only got one mid-grade comedian running that mic night once a week. Uh, do they have a professional club there where people are getting booked? Or do they just go back to that bar when they're booked and then someone charges them the door? Because I feel like Tommy is worth 10 bucks. I would pay $10 at the door to see Tommy talk about it. They had a comedy club there for a little bit, but they found that the name was a little bit too insensitive after all the murdering. They called it the Curse of of Thorn in My Side. Uh, They thought it was really funny, punny, but they they thought, yeah, too soon, too soon. But then again, Halloween 6 is not canon to this, so that joke doesn't make sense. But I had to go for the pun. Always go for the pun. Shut up, wife. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, shit. She's got a knife. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, you're about to get stabbed. Like She's, she's got gonna, a knife. Uh, no, this is what's going to happen. She's not going to stab you on camera. What she's going to do is she's going to disconnect your CPAP machine overnight so that you die. And she's just going to say, oh, my God, the hose came unplugged. I didn't know. I was asleep. Oh, I guess I get his insurance money. That's it. She just laughed. She just laughed. So that's exactly what she'll be doing. Exactly I'm on your game, what... Sarah. But uh, but I, we got a couple more movies to talk about. I don't want to spend too much more time on this movie. So let's wrap up Halloween. Where are we at? So for me, I gave this, uh, and I know we disagreed heavily, and this was a very polarizing movie. I gave it, uh, I, I loved it because I thought they weren't going to go. I gave it a thumbs up because I they weren't going to go. Let's do the same exact thing. I understand it. I respect it, my friend. I respect it. You had some good, you had some good reasonings. I respect your reasonings. So let's go over to uh, another, another more talked about movie, and we could go into this a little bit more. Oh, Spider Man, no way on home. here. Okay. So this movie, uh, we both liked. We Absolutely. were both blown away. This was away the good by. movie. Yeah. All it was missing was that Nickelback hero song. And then it would have been Don't no, stop it. Stop it. We I'm almost, kidding. I'm kidding. We've almost gotten rid of Nickelback. Please don't be the one that brings them back. Like somebody brought Linka Park back for a couple of years. Yeah, we bring yeah, we bring them back every once in a while. But no it's unforgivable. But this movie was incredible and it's still making news for many reasons. Number one, this it's making movie, a shitload of money. This this movie brought back the billion dollar club. Sure did. In, what, what in like four days? Like it crushed it, man. Crushed. So, I mean, <laughs> so number one, you got a billion dollar movie club right here. Yeah. Uh, number two, it is it severely impacted the future of Marvel movies totally in many different ways. Absolutely. Um and, and number three, we got all three Spider-Mans on screen 
for the first time ever. I mean, this was something. So beautiful. What? He, she said Toby was a good actor for once. Oh, yeah, when he was dressed up like a 40-year-old youth counselor. I love that joke. I love that joke. I'm, I, all the Spider-Mans were stellar in that movie. Oh, God, I, yes. I enjoyed them. I like. I love that they gave closure to a lot of their character arcs. Like, when, for me, when Andrew Garfield saves MJ. Oh, and, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. He got it. He got his redemption. And, like, notice what he did differently. You know, he didn't web to save her. He jumped this time. Yeah. As he, you know, so it's like he learned from his mistakes. He grew as a character. And Andrew Garfield is a fantastic actor. And I hope they, they've been talking about bringing back The Amazing Spider-Man 3, which I do hope they do. Oh, me too. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love to Tom Holland. I love Tom Holland. I think he's a great Spider-Man. I yeah, feel same. that I related a very hard to... Andrew Garfield's. There was something so there was something so personal. Even that second movie that was very Hollywood driven, Ooh. and you could tell the studio interfered with it. Oh, yeah. His performance, him and Emma Stone, mm -hmm. there was something so soulful that yeah. made me relate to that, and that carried me through that movie. I agree. Totally. Yeah. I've got a couple of things to say about yeah. this. So um, with the Andrew Garfield thing, 100 percent agree. I loved him in this film. I liked him a little bit more than Toby. I love Toby in this film. And if you want my opinion, in terms of Toby now playing Spider-Man in four films, this was his best one. And I'm throwing that out there. And I'm oh, saying yes, that against Spider-Man too. Hands this down. is the Toby best performance. He's older. He's more mature. He's trying to help Peter, who's back in high school, but he's like grown adult now. I love that. I love the fact that he stopped Peter from making the worst mistake of his life. And then he got stabbed for it. Uh, was really hoping he would die just for dramatic effect. Glad he didn't. But I'm like, when you get stabbed with something like this long from the Green Goblin, this is like the width of your body. You're it's going to die. You're <laughs> not going to survive that. That is going to pierce something and you were going to go septic and die within a few minutes. Like, that's yeah. just reality. But I'm glad they didn't kill him off, even though I wanted him to die in, to a just small degree for the dramatic piece. Let's have a Spider-Man from one of the multiverses die. Kind of like what they did in Into the Spider-Verse. So, well, I think we'll you'll get that wish soon, because this isn't going to be the last time that uh, we're going to see all three Spider-Mans on screen. Uh, there's been uh, extensive rumors that they will show back up in the Secret Invasion. Uh, oh, cool, project. cool. So, so I was yeah. glad to see Toby, uh, and I loved his portrayal. Like I said, to me, this is his best Spider-Man. Just Easily. throwing that out there. Easily. Uh, a lot of people complain about Andrew Garfield in his movies. Um, oh. I recently engaged in a conversation with a friend of mine. Uh, she may be watching the show. Hopefully she is. If not, maybe she'll watch it on YouTube later. Uh, yeah, by the way, subscribe to YouTube. Uh, right. So she was saying that the issue for her was that he wasn't the Peter Parker that we know. And, and I get that. But what you have to remember is we are in a multiverse of Spider-Men. So just like comic books that have been around for 60, 70, 80 some years, stories change, stories get updated, stories evolve as we evolve with time and technology and society and things like that. Um, so to me, in my opinion, there is no more. Th 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 OK, let me rephrase. There is a standard of accuracy. But to make an assertion now, especially with multiverses existing and things like that, to say, no, this isn't that character, I, I can't get on board with a lot of those anymore. Some of them I can. But with the people that say, well, that Andrew Garfield, that wasn't Peter Parker. Well, how many fucking, you know, multiverses do we have? Is it infinite? Is it finite? It really doesn't matter, but there's more than one Spider-Man. So they're all not going to be the exact Peter Parker from the 1967 comic books. Yeah. And the argument bothers me. And I liked seeing the different Peter Parker. I loved Amazing Spider-Man 1. Everybody hated that suit. I fucking love, love that suit. It's my favorite suit. You can crucify me in the comments for saying that. It was my favorite suit. I loved it. I loved he it. looked good in it.
The cinematography is phenomenal, especially in Spider-Man 2 when it has the camera on his chest and on his back and it's like you're with him web slinging. And it's not just him on a green screen swinging back and forth like the Toby one. This is involved. You can see his arms and his hands, the webs, where they connect, when he grabs, when it goes taunt, when he swings off of it, when he lets go. That shit amazes me. <laughs> no pun. But I love that. And I like that Andrew Garfield was more grounded. I like that he made his own suit and it was grounded into that regard. He was more scientific, Peter Parker. So he created the mechanical web shooters. I love that. Um, and I think that even though the second one, let's just admit, it was really bad and it, it, it ended it before he got his third film. I think that he, people liked his character, but then they forgot about him. And then now that you brought him back, everyone's like, oh, shit, we really did like him. And, oh, my God, he was amazing in this movie. Let's give him his third movie now. I have seen people who hated both of the amazing Spider-Man movies. Like, yeah, give this man his third movie. So, yeah. dude, I I'm saying it right here. Give the man his third movie. Let's see it. Do the Sinister Six. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. But give this man his movie. I agree. I mean, I mean here's the thing I always tell people. You know, I... The thing is, these characters have been written, rewritten, and rewritten, and rewritten oh, as yeah. totally different people oh, yeah. over the years that have been there. Like, I always tell people, like, some people that don't like Ben Affleck's Batman, but then they say they like Christian Bale's Batman. I'm like, well, you like more the, the Joe Loeb Batman. Mm. You know, but that doesn't mean what Ben Affleck did was wrong. God, and it doesn't mean what ben Christian Affleck, Bale did was man. wrong. He was great Batman. You know, they, oh, were, they were literally two different Batmans because if you read the comic books, very absolutely very, there's and, just and like Superman. There's so many different Superman exactly. now. You can't say I mean you can, there are standards, but that argument to me just loses a lot of the um what's the word I'm looking for? It, to me, I, I feel like we need to evolve, anyway. we need to evolve our arguments now because saying it's not comic accurate to material that's been, to your point, rewritten, retold, rewritten, retold, off of retellings, off of copies, off of retellings. At some point, you finally have to say, it's got to be different. And while I'm a stickler for certain things, I, as I've grown older, I've come to realize this more and more. And it's allowed me to enjoy certain things more. And it's certainly caused me to not enjoy other things a little bit more. But, um, you know, it's... I, I feel like I'm more willing to go at least give different versions a try now because to me, the OG is so old now, we do need to kind of move forward and update some shit. And so I now, in my older adult life, tend to get behind those things a little bit more than I would have, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Total sense. And and to just close to bring it on home with the Spider Man's, you know, if you grew up watching the nineties cartoon. Oh, I've been rewatching it on Disney, man. It's so good. You're gonna be more inclined to like Toby. And if you liked uh the Ultimates comic book run, you're gonna be more inclined to like Andrew Garfield. And that's why I like him, because I love the Ultimate Spider Man run. Yeah. It's one of my favorite runs. And if you like more of the modern day stuff with Peter Parker, you're going to like Tom Holland. You know, it, it, so it, it's like everybody is biased. And, and it, sure. to, to not just to the point that you're subjective in the movie, but you're subjective in what you consider the prestige of uh, source material. Like, for example, yeah. I have uh, both run, I have both the first edition runs of. The Dark Knight Returns in year one. If you're not a Frank Miller Batman fan, you'd be like, oh, dude, that's shit. And that's fine. That's fine. Well, you you know, are. Like, and you hold that in a higher regard. I do. I hold it in a higher regard because there's something that relates. And, and and like you said, with the ultimate Spider-Man, there's something just seeing him stay in high school longer and be yeah. a kid that made me relate very much. And that's what they did with Garfield. They kept him in. He was, I mean, think about it. Tobey Maguire left college halfway into the first movie. No, not even halfway. No, Let's he say, was still in college in, in the second movie, bro. Remember? No, not, no, no. Sorry, high school. Sorry. He left high, high school. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He left yeah. high school the first movie. But then uh, Andrew Garfield 
didn't leave uh, high school. Well, he, he graduated, but he didn't go to college yet. It was just after graduation. Yeah. Because remember, graduation was the opening scene when he was fighting the rhino before he had the rhino suit. Yeah. Where's Paul well, Giamatti going like this the whole time? Which I wanted. I wanted more of that. I wanted <laughs> to see. And again, some people like the, the giant guy in the rhino suit. For anybody who's an ultimate comic cool. for anybody who's an ultimate comic book fan, that's the way he is in the ultimate comics. He's not big, he's a robot. Yeah. You know? So, so again, let's do, real quick, let's do this. Before we thumbs up, thumbs down, top three film Spider-Man films, you go first. I'm not gonna here's the thing. I'm gonna take no way home out of the equation. Because I just feel like that's an obvious. I honestly think that's the best Spider-Man. Well, that's your choice if you want to do that. I won't. Everybody, do that, I'm but taking if you want to do that, go ahead. Obviously, it's so freaking amazing. I'm talking yeah. strictly really solo, is. strictly solo. Okay, so in that case, uh, I'm gonna say Far From Home is my number one. My number two is the first Andrew Garfield, and the number three spot will go to Homecoming. Whoa, Spider Man 2 didn't even make the list, huh? You know, I know, I know everybody thinks I'm a piece of shit for not including that movie, but I'm, I don't look, it's okay. I think that movie was heavily successful and carried on the back of a Mr. Alfred Molina, of course, it was. So, I mean, I won't even count that as a, as a Spider-Man movie. I count that more of a Dr. Octopus movie. Because, I, I, I don't know. For me, Tobey Maguire, like I said, he was the best he ever has been in this new movie. I, I, I now watch back and I just kind of feel awkward. I feel aw- awkward with him, his character now. I don't know. It's just, And again, that could be an interpretation. That could be an interpretation of me not liking the Tobey Maguire style of Spider-Man. Not well, Tobey Maguire okay. himself. But the older Spider-Man, yeah. So, uh, you know, I got a little soft spot for Alfred Molina because, you know, the whole, like, species thing uh, where he literally has sex with the alien and fathers the child and then gets murdered. So, um, you know, and hey, he did it before Adrian Brody did it in Splice. So Alfred gets the credit, not Adrian Brody. He was just a follower. Uh, Anyways... Look, I rewatched all the Spider-Man films, like I said, before we did our show about it. And I came to the realization that Spider-Man 2 is still great. But I think it being number one, to me, it's a little ridiculous. Um, especially because Doc Ock is a normal guy. He doesn't have super skin. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't have super strength. All he has are a couple of robots wired to his brain. And so when, like, Spider-Man is punching him, who has superpowers, his head should be popping off or his <laughs> head should be cracked. Or, like, when Spider-Man kicks him through a brick window building wall and then he hits a taxi cab and literally gets up and walks away without internal bleeding. I know that I'm being picky here, but it took me out of it. That's when I was like... Ooh, I didn't really realize this because I was focused on other things. But when I look at the how the film is presented, I'm like, we've gotten a little better since this movie came out. So here's my list. Number one, No Way Home. Number two, Spider-Man 2. Number three, first Andrew Garfield, Amazing Spider-Man. So I got one from each of the franchises in there. Solid list. Solid list all around. Uh, um, so we're doing thumbs up on Spider-Man. Two thumbs up. I wish I could hang upside down so that I could do the little Spider-Man joke where he's upside down yeah, and he's doing the thumbs down, but it's really thumbs up. Uh, but I'm not Spider-Man. I can't hang upside down, and I don't have the agility to do that. I'm I'm 40 and fat and balding, so uh, can't do that. Oh, apparently Jesse's got some camera tricks up his sleeve. There you go. I had I had to do it. All right. <sighs> All right, all right, all right. Uh, let's get down to. I, I'm saving the one for last. October. I know you are. Just crit. move on to the next one. What did, <laughs> what'd you pick? Oh, good pick, man. Good. Which, pick. by the way, good. Pick. I just want to point something out. Willem Dafoe, great year. Oh, he stole that movie easily, dude. Oh my god, he was, good he was in this movie, movie too. 
He was in Homecoming. He was sorry. He was in No Way Home, and he was in this movie too. Which, by the way, I mean, like, wow. I, I think that's so cool that he got to. He, we got to see Willem as, as the memes say, Willem the friend, and then Willem the foe. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I love that meme. I they could do that all day, and that will crack me up to this day. But man, this movie, I love it so much for a thousand reasons. Number one, it was willed into existence, like much of my success in comedy it's been i had to will it into existence to make it work despite you know the higher up saying no you're not going to do it snyder he was told by the warner brothers guy no you're not going to do this no it's not going to happen we're the josh Weeds is going to fuck your movie up you know they they railroaded him out of his own movie they really did they used his daughter's suicide and and i and i I'm very adamant that's what they did. I don't disagree with you. I I believe there was definitely a lot of that going on. Yeah, they 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 found a way to get him out. And they they used his because his his daughter is very present in this new movie. Uh, I mean, not only is the movie dedicated to her, uh, the song Hallelujah was her favorite song. And then number three, when they're dry, when Bruce Wayne and the Flash are driving off and he goes, I'm rich, you know. There's a sign that says you're not alone. That was a suicide hotline. Okay. I missed that actually. So, oh, I, I love this movie. I have no idea. This movie to me was beautiful. It was iconic. Was it perfect? No, it had its little flaws, but I think it, that's what makes sometimes to me with the masterpieces. This will always be in my top three favorite comic book movies because number one, holy God, I didn't know I cared that much about Cyborg. Yeah. Holy God. Yeah. Like he was the heart of the movie. Yeah. And this this movie, I when any of my anybody tells me, ah, is anything that important? I'm like, uh, ask, yeah, you okay? If somebody asks, is editing important? Just point to Star Wars. There's your demonstration of why editing is important. Yes, yes, editing is very important. This movie, like, it, it, editing was the end of the day. That we had weed and cut, and then we had the Snyder cut. And it's not, I remember at, the morning I woke up after this movie came out and everybody watched it and everything on TikTok was everybody throwing away the weed and cut into the trash. It was hilarious. It's a trend. Yeah. And, and we didn't, I don't think he's worked since. Well, he's had some problems that have. Well, he's had one. So, I think, yeah. I think, I think this was the Hannibal Buress routine. And then we then we got all the real stuff later on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like this was I think it was the primer because like he was threatening Gal Gadot. He was doing all kinds of shit. Oh, he dude. Was, well, when Elijah Dushku came out, that was pretty much nail in the coffin at that point. She let the cat out of the bag. She's like, no, this is what's really been going on. Yeah. Let me just let you guys know. And uh, yeah, I mean, well, you know, you make decisions, you get held accountable. So. Yep, that's it. and that's it. And you, you know, and I was happy to hear about that because like, it, 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 there's no room for that type of thing. Like, I've directed plays before. I the one thing I I always it, here's the thing when you when you treat your actors and actresses and crew with great respect and you keep yeah. the room fun, you yes. will always you will always get the best product. Absolutely, always. I Absolutely. promise you, you will always get the best product. As Absolutely. soon as you you bring the cl- the doom clouds to the set. It, it's over. The show's yeah. over. It's gonna be miserable. No one's gonna like it. It's gonna be broken. But let's uh, step away from that because obviously that's not what we're here to talk about. This movie is a revelation, in my opinion. It gave us. It gave me a great Batman. It finished Ben mm. Affleck's arc. Yeah. You know what I mean, he's now recovered. He is now truly Batman again. He has hope and he's re- ready to fight. So and so, John, tell me what you thought of this flick. Well, first of all, I I did watch it twice. Uh, because I had to watch a black and white version, and to be honest, the black and white version is really awesome. Uh, it 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 adds a layer of depth to it that you don't see until you watch. You just have to watch it. Yeah. Um. It it made me care more about characters. I mean, I already did, but it made me care a little bit more. And especially the end fight with Steppenwolf, and especially once my man Superman shows up um when you're watching it in black and white that moment's just that much better when he shows up and you're like oh shit here we go not like, it's, impressed it was it was just amped up that extra level for me when i watched it in black and white so uh i'd highly recommend anybody whether you've seen it or haven't seen it yet um the black and white's definitely worth watching uh i really enjoyed it so i watched it twice it's a long movie i don't really need to watch it again 
Yeah, I'm not saying I wouldn't, but there's just been no reason to recently. You don't want to but, spoil uh, it. Yeah. I uh, I really love how we got the proper cyborg character. I still absolutely hate the stupid boxes. I absolutely hate not bringing Superman back properly because we did the stupid doomsday thing at the end of Dawn of Justice, which I don't shit all over that movie like everybody does. I recognize the flaws. Director's cut is way better. I still enjoy the film for what it is. But yeah, there's some stupid shit that happens. And because of that, we then had to have some stupid shit in this movie, which still bothers me. Um, I really would have just preferred the classic regeneration. I would have preferred him with no cape and the longer hair. But again, that's me. I, I still think we deserved, even if they did a two movie, like its own thing, just fucking give me the death of and reign of Superman live action do it properly. You could even self-contain it in two movies and I'd be totally fine because even though they redeemed it with the newer versions of death of Superman and reign of Superman, it's still not accurate. And that does bother me because that is one story. And so you have to do that story correctly. You can't really make the changes because that story has only been done one time. So that is what it is. It's not like 90 years of Superman where we have 55 different versions and stories and multiverses and infinite crises and shit like that. We have one death of Superman. So you kind of have to do it that way because that's the only one we have. And so it really bothers me that we've had two animated attempts and a live action attempt and they've all fallen short. But the most recent one is the best of the three attempts. Anyways, so... That bothered me with the whole thing with Superman, but nonetheless, I like how the battle with Steppenwolf meant a little bit more. There were the stakes were there, the emotion was there, the battle was so much better. Uh, the flash wasn't reduced to running circles around some shit. As oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, you know, contribution to the end of the movie. So, uh, it was just great to see characters like not humiliated and like actually let them do what they're supposed to do relative to what their powers are. And I just felt like the, the Snyder cut balanced that a lot more. Again, it's not a perfect film. It's super long. There's some stupid shit in there. Like <clears throat> Jared Leto is the Joker with his. Ah, 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 laugh. Ah, ah. You sound like a fucking dying seal, Jared Leto. What are you doing, man? You were in American it's psycho. Come on. It's like he showed up late to work and he just watched Mars Attacks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. laughed. Ah! Yeah, I mean, it's I, to this day, like, I'll just watch that scene on YouTube. And I'm just like, man, I wish that, like, I met Jared Leto, like, at a, like, convention or something and kind of, like, befriended him to where we were, like, sending some messages occasionally. Because I just really want to, like, pick his brain on, like, because he talked about how he just, like, so crazy prepared for the role. Uh, and I, I just really want to talk about where that laugh came from because I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, it, it was just – and here's the thing. I, when it comes to a Joker laugh, you can't just have one yeah. laugh. You have to have many laughs. Like you, I, I mean, and the thing is, Mark Hamill – put the the stake so friggin' high. I mean, yeah, he, I agree. I agree. He invented it. Yeah. I you, know, agree. you everybody always ends up getting compared to Mark Hamill, no matter what. You know, uh, I mean, Joaquin Phoenix was compared to him. Heath Ledger was compared to him, no matter what. And because, I mean, that was the definitive, as you said, it, you look at, you said like the Superman thing, like there was just one way to bring him back from the dead. For some people in many people's eyes, Mark Hamill, is the definitive way for a Joker to laugh. Well, yeah, anybody who was like six years old, now I was way older than that when the animated series came out, so I had other Joker exposure. I had 66 Joker, I had Tim Burton Joker, Dude, yeah, I, I had, had several different too. comic renditions of Joker, but if you were like six or seven, and that was your first exposure to Batman, boom, that's your Joker right there. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to compare everything to that, just like Christopher Reeve is Superman. He played that part so well, even though the way that Superman was written was absurd compared to how Superman was at that time. But nonetheless, so many people associate him, including myself, as Superman because that's their dude. That's who they grew up watching. I grew up watching Christopher Reeve as Superman, so that's just always going to be my Superman. It doesn't mean I hate the other Superman. It just means that 
my nostalgic connection is to Reeve. And there are a ton of people who have a nostalgic connection to Mark Hamill's voice of the animated Joker. And that's totally fine because it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, now we're going to switch gears on to the next thing, but before right, we go well, any we got, further, uh, we're doing our, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. before we go any further, uh, our, my final assessment. Yes. Yes. It's worth the four hours. Even if you only watch it once, you know, it's absolutely worth it. Especially if you're someone that does like DC or likes some of these characters or really felt let down with justice league, which I did. Uh, it was just like, oh, finally, we got something. And it's a lot better. Still flawed, but a lot better. So, yeah. All, All right. right. Run out of time. So, we got to get our last one in here. We always do this. There it is. There it is. There it is. There I it is. I watched it. it. I watched it. I watched it again. Wait, you mean after we talked like yesterday, you rewatched it? No, no, no. From the show, from our last show, I rewatched it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make an amendment. I'm gonna make an amendment. To oh my shit, statement. here we go. All right. And I, I want this to open it up just so you know that I'm being okay. I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible to this. Let's hear it, man. This movie, uh and now when we talked, I like I said, I understand that I have not watched the Wachowski's film career. I was basing my opinion upon the first matrix, which again, as I pointed out the dangers of comparing stuff to the original. You know what yeah. I mean? The original is always going to be better. Now, this movie was way worse than I thought. Way, way more worse than I thought. Wait, uh, so how many times have you watched this movie now in total? Three? Two? So this is this is pretty crazy because you watched it the first time and you were like, nah, I liked it. I recognize A, B, and C wasn't that great, but I liked it. Now you're kind of turning here. I mean, so. Here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. Because I also watched the first one. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Again, okay, so the first one, like I said, we kind of joked that this might have been a fluke for them. They, they made something that great. It could because have been. I felt like the first one was cool, slick, um, and it just had, it was smart. It was a well, There was nothing movie. else. That was 1999, man. Nothing else like that. And the fight there. scenes were immaculate. This movie... Uh, Alana should have not have directed. She needed a stunt coordinator. Just she needed it. You don't. You, you. She does not know how to direct fight scenes. That's just the true fact. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's number one. Number two. Um, it contradicted itself. But I hate that the movie felt it had to dumb itself down to the mm -hmm. lowest common denominator. Yep. And it. I felt like it literally followed a studio's playbook with the whole, okay, we got to mention reboots. Okay, we got to mention reboots. And they beat you over the head with it the whole movie. Yeah, and here's the thing with video games. They could have done something interesting. Augmented reality, talk about what is true reality. Because, I mean, technically they live in an augmented reality. Or just maybe not do that and just recognize I, I it's a new matrix. Been, there could have been a very forward. interesting line. There, that that was not interesting. That was. They, so uh, they, I think if they would have done it properly, they could have they could have done it correctly. But I think I I and I know this sounds awful to the say to them because I don't like saying mean shit. But I don't think they have the skills to carry this forward. I just don't think they did. You know, I mean, I. I agree. The whole thing just seemed really rushed and the whole thing was really, it was rushed because we don't want Warner brothers to do it. Well, I, let's see what they would have done. It probably would have been a better movie. Um, also, I, I still do not have that much. I know. So the other thing is, is it like, look, when the matrix came out, Keanu wasn't like how he is now, you know, he had some hits but there, it wasn't anything consistent. You know, he wasn't like a lister or anything. And you had Lawrence Fishburne in there, which had a lot more weight. You had Hugo showing up, which had a lot more weight. And then Keanu showing up. So you have this like group of actors that just made the film, right? And then you make another movie and they're like, oh, hey, um, well, we actually have a commitment on some other movies we're doing, so we can't shoot it this time, but we could shoot it this time. And I they're like, yeah, no thanks. 
I heard they didn't ask uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Oh, really? I, again, fact check me. I was reading on IMDb because I was looking up because I was hate fucking the movie when I was watching it. And uh, I, and, I, and there was like someone asked like why he wasn't in the movie. And he replied, good question. So based on that, that, response, that, that upsets me even more now that I know about that. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, how do I want to word this? When you have an iconic film such as The Matrix, mm. again, there's objective standards of expectation that are just inherent, meaning that if you go in with ABC expectation, it's a valid expectation. Nobody can say, well, you didn't set your expectations properly, so you didn't enjoy the movie. No, no, no. There are standards of expectations with a Matrix film. Mm -hmm. And... When you shoot your film and you shoot it in a way that is not polished, it shows. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't do rehearsals for major scenes because you want to capture things in the moment, that works sometimes. It doesn't always work all the time. <clears throat> Ghostbusters 2016. So I don't know why... Lana was like, hey, let's do that for a Matrix movie. I don't understand why it happened, and maybe I'm not supposed to understand, hmm. but it really shows. Yeah. I went back and tried to watch it a second time a couple nights ago because I couldn't sleep. I got halfway through it before I was just like, no. And, and, and look, here's the th I could watch any of the Fast and Furious movies, even the bad ones. I could watch the other bad Matrix movies. I can watch the bad Halloween. I can watch the bad Freddy Krueger movies. Bad movies don't bother me. But bad movies that shouldn't have been bad, that ruin their own legacy, I can't watch again. And in my opinion, that. Matrix ruined its own legacy by completely butchering everything for literally no reason at all. I can't get behind that. So and I'll just watch movie, the first movie and the other two and be okay with that. This movie didn't have any stakes. There was no, no none. Zero. There was zero. I didn't I, care. I didn't care I about anything. Watching, I remember the first movie having this existential crisis of, is, are they ever going to be happy? Are they ever going to have a good day? You know, yeah. <laughs> Nobody has a good day I, in the Matrix. <laughs> like, well, yeah. Like, I was just like, are they ever going to, is anything ever going to be okay? Like, I never felt like anything was ever going to be okay. This yeah. movie, I was like, looking at my watch. All right, it's so another 20 minutes. They'll, 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 they'll make it all happy. Don't worry. Nope. And, and, and I was right. They made it happy. And it's like, I didn't want that. The, the main, if you're going to start a trilogy, bring me on a quest. Frodo didn't get to the, to the, the, to Mordor day in the first movie. You know I mean, mean, they could have if he just would have gotten on the fucking Griffin that apparently exists, but we won't go into that discussion. We won't. We won't. I mean, I mean, should he have said something? Yes, he should have told us about the Griffin, but did he? <laughs> Probably should have said something. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> it's like, it's like after walking five miles, I'm like, oh man, this, this, right. this could have been cool in my car. What? Yeah, yeah back there. <laughs> Just get the but, Griffin. This shit could have been over a long time ago. <laughs> just have the Griffin just carry it. Just train it. <laughs> right, right, right. Here. He's like falconry. Like, here's the ring. Go drop it. Drop but it. then the Griffin keeps it and becomes a super-powered Griffin and takes over the land. Anyways, back to the Matrix. <laughs> and the translation would be, why shouldn't I have it? <laughs> <laughs> but as he puts it on his talent. Dude, and Smeagol fights the Griffin in I Celebrity Deathmatch. There it is, man. I would watch that, and that would be way more entertaining than what uh, Matrix was around. It absolutely about. would. I'm not going to lie. That would be a better I, hour spent than watching Matrix Resurrection. But, like, would you, if, and and just so people can really understand the fight scene issue I have with that movie, oh, God, when you watch the so first bad. movie, don't just watch the choreography, but watch how it's shot. Yes. Watch the angle. Watch it. Yes. Watch that. Because... The way they they filmed this, I couldn't see anything. No, because it was sloppy. It was that's very, what, that's what I said. You've got a hundred and fifty million dollar budget. Where is that budget? 
I, I, look, we already looked up the actors' salaries and what they go for, so we know that that's just kind of standard, okay? Um, I don't know where the money for this movie was spent. I have no idea, because it certainly doesn't show in the presentation. It certainly doesn't show in the quality of the visual effects. You got it. it certainly doesn't show in the choreography. And, dude, I know I'm not the only one that saw this, but Keanu was delivering his lines so lazily I didn't even think he wanted to be there. I'm just like, are you serious? Like, if you watch the first film and this one, it's like two different guys playing the role. And I get the whole, oh, it's the Matrix 5, and oh, he's in this Matrix, and well, he's different when he's in the Matrix. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. We get that. But there was still a continuity to Keanu, a.k.a. Neo, delivering his lines, whether he was in or out of the Matrix. Matrix 4... Dude delivers his lines like nobody I've ever seen. And that really bothered me, too. That that kind of tells me he may not have wanted to be there, even though he says he did. I he kind of there was times where I thought he went dead eye. So yeah, <laughs> again, maybe that's maybe, maybe that's the result of lack of rehearsal. And I could understand that thing. And maybe he really did want to be there. I believe him. The guy is a genuine guy. Yeah. He was like a great guy. So I have no reason not to believe him to a degree, of course. So maybe it's not that. Maybe it's just because this movie is so horrible. His por- his performance isn't even something that's in the spotlight. Maybe that's what it is. I think that's what it is. That makes a lot more sense to me. I, 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 I think well. that I think that's what it was. But I mean, like I said, we'll see what they we'll see what they do next if there is a next movie. I mean, I, look, if they do it, I'll watch it. But I really don't want them to do it. I, I you know, I'm in. I'll watch it, but I at this point let it go. Just I, I let would it say go. let it go. Let this let it go. Let this one let the body lie. But anyways, that's all the time we oh hey, we gotta, we gotta do our party. rating right. for Matrix. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. And I also want to say, Jesse, that uh, I am going to make you watch Jupiter Ascending because I had to suffer twice through that movie. You're going to suffer through it because then you'll have a better idea of, of the crazy ass. What the fuck are you doing with Chowski movies? And that will further cement you watching Matrix Resurrection be like, oh, oh, so this is like what they put out now. <laughs> It is. And look, I'll defend parts of the concept of Jupiter Ascending. I'll defend the concept of Cloud Atlas, but I'm not going to defend the films because they're not good. And The Matrix is just the next one in the line of not good films they've been making. Yeah. And like I I said, I I think for me, in my opinion, the movie could have literally ended with him flying into the air after he threatened the machines. Like, I mean, or just like, I don't know, maybe create a valid reason why he needed to be woke back up. Like, oh, no, no, oh, I'm, hey. talking about, I'm sorry, I'm talking about it from the first movie, literally from the first oh, movie. Oh, oh, they oh, could have oh. ended it there, literally. That's yeah, how I but feel. I mean, look, it's Warner Brothers. Studio wants money. They're going to make money. They make the Wachowskis right. You know, basically, a two two more movies that are kind of subsequent. They're not. They're they're a part of the trilogy, but they are separate from the original film. I get that. Um, maybe we should have just like not made the movie, or maybe we should have let Warner Brothers try. Yeah. Okay. What if they got your buddy James Gunn to do this movie? All right, all right, then then in my opinion, Warner Brothers is not involved. But no comedy, James Gunn. No I would, comedy. I, I would I, no, like I'm, straight lace, James. I would Gunn. be okay with that. I'd be okay with him. I mean, I'd it would have inherently been better. I it, it, I I would not have minded seeing a non-comedy James Gunn. I've seen that before, and he's rocked it on there in that realm. Bring him in. I think he would kill it. I just I just think. If Warner Brothers wants a successful movie, they need to take their hands off the wheel and realize you are the money guys. Yeah, you aren't the creative. Just focus on you your job with creating the money. You're not a you're not a creative. Right, right, right. Yes, okay. exactly. Know your role. <laughs> know your role. All right. Look, look. I when I'm when I'm acting in somebody's uh, project, I don't step behind the camera and start directing. That's not my job. That's not my position. That's not what I'm there to do. Good for you, so, Jesse. I think, way I way think to be a good actor. Thank you. Yes. So if you're <laughs> if you're a producer, do your end of the job, 
trust your director. And if you don't trust your director, you should have never had your director. Exactly. I agree. The producer and the director need to be aligned. If that ever breaks, then it needs to stop because it's just going to lead to a disaster. Somebody needs to leave. But yeah. But anyways, uh, that's all the time for at the oh, table. We're already I out know, of right? New Year's special. Oh my god! I know. Thank you so much for everybody that tuned in today. Uh, it was a blast talking about all these things. Reggie, Ryan, Ted. Thank you guys all for tuning in and talking with us. Uh, like I said, this uh, there's a lot of great movies still out. You could check out. I mean, there was a ton we could have talked about with the show. It was hard to water it down to just this. Just this. It was, but it was great. Um, so, anyways, tune in next week. We'll be, we'll have some more. Uh, we're going to talk about Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Yeah. Cobra so Kai. Yes. We already did a Cobra Kai uh, episode this year. So, we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time. Yeah. We will kind of retell one through three, but we'll focus more on season four because, holy shit, I'm only six episodes in and so much has already happened. And look, we're not going to give any spoilers right now. Everybody already knows Terry Silver comes back. That's not oh, a spoiler. Dude, when he does this. Dude, he when he did that. it, I was like, there it is. Yes. Dude, oh, you have no idea how happy I it was. There. It was there. So, no um, idea. R- real, real quick, um, before we log out, you know, we we had an awesome 2021, Jesse. We had a lot of great shows. We've had a ton of awesome guests on our show with our between our friends, family, and other people that we know. I couldn't be more grateful, more thankful for everybody who makes this show special, especially our guests. But I want to thank three particular guests, and that is uh, Phil Moore who is the host of Nick Arcade. I want to thank um, Mark Holton, who played Francis in the Pee Wee film. And I also want to thank Eric Walker, who played Mace in the Ewok movies. Which, by the way, are on Disney+. Plus. Yes. So so Eric led the petition to get those added, and he won. He got enough signatures, and he convinced Disney to add those to Disney+. Plus. So he won, and you better believe my name was on that petition. So uh, these guys have very busy lives. They are still very active in performing arts and entertainment, whether it's in front of the screen, behind the screen. And these guys took time out of their day to talk to us on this show. These are three people that I looked up to as a kid and would never have thought that I would have, you know, the, uh, the not only the platform, but the privilege of speaking with them. And I just want to throw a huge shout out to those guys and say thank you so much thank for you. being on our show and being a part of what Jesse and I really love to do. Those guys are really special to me in this show, and I really do appreciate that. So I just wanted to throw that out there for them real quick. No, thank you. Yeah, it, it's incredible. And and we got I, we thank you guys, the fans, for joining us. I mean, you guys help fuel us to get to you know to get out of our comfort zone to get these guys to come on down. And they are the sweetest people in the world. You've seen it. You've watched the episodes. And but we gotta thank you guys, man. So thank you so much for everybody that tunes Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Whether it's this episode or the next episodes, thank you. Cobra Kai next week, man. Cobra, Cobra Kai. Kai next week. I'm all pumped. right. I'm pumped. I'm, I, I can't wait for this. It's I should get good. an eagle fang bandana and wear that for the show. <laughs> Dude, I, 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 my brother and I have been trying to seek out the eagle fang shirts. <laughs> dude, dude I, I, I'm going to jump on Amazon tonight and see if they got just something on there that you can get here in a week. Because, yeah, I'll rock that. I, I would rock that in a heartbeat. Uh, and then next week, I will reveal also a cool painting I got from my brother. It's huge. It's fucking huge. Is and it about gonna, Cobra Kai? No, no, it's not Cobra oh, okay. Kai. I was, was like, probably, wow, you painted a Cobra Kai painting? I'm going to give you a hint what it is. It's, it's, it, we kind of talked about the franchise last year. All right. I'm going to give you a hint what the painting is, right? Watch this. You're going to know it immediately. Hey, look, it's a Vigo. Wow. He painted it, huh? They're not painted. It's Bozer, but I call it a painting because I watched Nice, to. man. Nice. I like yeah, it. If nobody knows what that movie reference is, well, I mean, why am I covered in this strange goo? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Until next time. I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the Grown Ups table. Thank you and have a happy New Year's. Let's kick ass 2022, baby. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got in my Johnny Lawrence mode. That's yeah. for next week. There you, you got go. it, everyone. Take care. <laughs>